my ass, you know. I won't let you down. He's like, can you pass a drug test? Hell yeah, I can pass a drug test. And that too felt so good to say because I could never pass a drug test a day in my life. My piss was so dirty all the time, you know. It felt good, man. I'm on the right track. You know, I, I took the test. I passed it. And then he told me, hey, you got to have steel toe boots, man. If you can get steel toe boots, you come back here tomorrow at 3 o'clock and I'll send you to work. I didn't have no money. I didn't have shit. So there's no way I was going to be able to get some steel toe boots, you know. But I went home, you know, I bummed out, you know, the job opportunity was there. But I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do to get these boots, man. I got no money. I got nothing. And, you know, I go back to the halfway house and, and I get there. And uh, my roommate, big old guy, big old guy, man, had to be about like 6'2 and like, like 300, man, you know. And yeah, it was like a size 15. So I'm, you know, I, at the end of the night, I'm, I'm telling him the story about what happened, you know. And I'm like, you know, I'm just, you know, basically playing the victim, man, you know. And I'm telling him, you know, all this shit, man, is too much. They, they want me to do this. They want me to do that. Wham, wham, wham. You know, having a little sob story, you know. And I told him I couldn't do it because I didn't have any steel toe boots, man. I tried hard to find them. I couldn't. And my roommate. He told me, man, look, this is your lucky day. You know, and he, he had he had like a size 15 steel toe boot. And he offered, you know, you could have them, you know, you could use them, you know, just to get your foot in the door, you know. And I was like, wow, what a blessing, you know. So the next day came and I, you know, I put them boots on, man. And I tell you, man, those things were like clown shoes on me, man. When I tell you they were like this, this much bigger than my foot you know but i had that vision i still had that vision i'm like i don't care i don't give a shit so i'm stomping around man you know and i go and they send me stomping around they sent me to work man and i went to work at a place called pactive and pactive is uh they create they make lids that go on you know any any cup anything you know major companies starbucks uh dunkin donuts mcdonald's burger king we make lids for everywhere sonic we make lids for for everything you know They're, basically we shut down the competition man pactive you know there's a lot of there's a lot of plastic lids companies out there but i i believe pactive is the biggest one and and it also saved my life so I, i'll never forget you know so anyway, I get there, and you know, I'm like a fish out of water, man. Everybody's like looking at me like, I, but you know what? Nobody knows what I've been through. Nobody knows what I've been through, man. So that's all that was in my mind. I'm stomping around that warehouse with these big-ass cloud hopping boots on size 15 when I wear a size 8. People are looking at me. I'm sure people are laughing at me, but nobody knows what I have been through in my life. Nobody knows. That's why I didn't give a shit, you know? If they would know where I had been in my life, that I was homeless, that I was under a bridge, that I was eating out of trash cans, and that I didn't want to live that life no more, then they would understand, man, you know? For people are so quick to look at you and judge you without even knowing the struggles you've been through. Without even knowing the struggles you've been through. So I stomped around that warehouse, man. I stomped around... I stomped around for two weeks until I got my first check. I got my first check and it felt so goddamn good. You know? It felt so good to get my first check. And I bought me a pair of size eights that fit me. You know? And I kept working. I kept showing up. I kept working. I kept working. I'm going on almost nine years with that company now. You know? As a temp. And... Almost six years being an employee. But I rose all the way up in the company, you know. And it just feels so good, you know. I just had just wanted to get all this stuff off my off my head, man, off my back because I know there's people out there, you know, it might be you right now listening to this, you know, and just just keep going. Keep keep pushing forward. You don't don't succumb to those fucking demons, man, that are in your mind, man. You got to keep those demons up under your foot. You know it's not easy. It's going to take a lot of work. A lot of work. You're going to cry. 
You're gonna laugh. You're gonna you're gonna go through good times. You're gonna go through bad times. But you cannot go back to the, the way you were living before. You know. Trust me, that shit is gonna be there. If you want to go back to the streets, if you want to go back to the gangs, and you want to go back to the drugs, and you want to go back to fucking prison, trust me, man, they ain't shut down no prisons. They got room for you. They will make room for you. That shit's gonna be there. If that is what you really want to do with your life, trust me, you can go back. You can go back anytime you want to. If that's exactly what you want to do, trust me, it's there for you. But you, but guess what? Having a life that you could never imagine, busting your ass, working a job for a fucking honest paycheck, some shit that a lot of us never even thought about. Now that's what a real person does. That's what a real man, a real woman does. Handles their responsibilities, shows up for their family, shows up for their job because their their people rely on you. You know, I had to stop playing the victim. I was playing the victim for 20 years, man. It was everybody else's fault, man. I had my finger pointed at everybody else. I was homeless on the streets. How come my sisters are not helping me? How come my mother was not helping me at the time? You know? How come my father's not helping me? When, when, when? No, man. When I, you know what changed my life? When I stopped playing the victim, man. You got to get over that shit. Get over it, get on with it, and make a future for yourself. You know? I'm telling you guys, man, it's it's not easy. I know it's not easy. But anything can happen if you put your mind to it, man. If there's something that you want, write that shit down on a piece of paper. Look at it every morning. Manifest that shit, man. That shit is real, man. The law of attraction is real. I'm telling you guys right now, man. I'm about to close on my first home January 4th. From being homeless under a bridge, eating out of trash cans, to being one of the lead process techs in my job. Nothing short of a miracle, guys. Nothing short of a miracle. And all these miracles ha can happen to anybody. You just got to stop playing the victim role and create a life that's so beautiful, man. Because I'm going to tell you what, when you start doing just things, when you start living with some integrity, you start doing things the right way, this door opens. This door opens. Is it all fun and games all the time? Is it all hunky-dory all the time? No, of course it's not, but that's life, man. That's why you learn to live life on life's terms. One of my most favorite quotes from the program, man. Learn to live life on life's terms because when bad stuff comes at you, you're gonna have the tools you need to fucking not even worry about that. You're gonna work right through it. You use all that shit, man. All the pain, all the nights that you were dope sick, all the fucking pain you went through from being abused as a child, all the pain you went through from being beat up by your parents. All the fucking mental health and mental fucking illness that you were suffering. Recycle that shit. Use it all as fucking motivation, man, to keep you going, man. I know it's not easy. But you're worth it. I just wanted to share that little 